Happy March! What's up, superheroes? Superman out of 100 here. Today is Wednesday. No, not Wednesday. Thursday, March 1st, 2018. This is day 449. Today is Justin Bieber's birthday. <laughs> I am not, I'm not too sure how old the Biebs is, let me, uh, let me do a quick, ch uh, do a quick search here, Justin Bieber, he is officially 24, oh my god, and I've been listening to him, since he was okay when did baby come out his birthday is March 1st and baby came out January 18th so that's how old he turned in 2009 15 I've been listening to him since he was 15 Before he hit puberty. <clears throat> and then the, the the old songs are fucking terrible. Except for some of the good... Two of the old Justin Bieber songs that I like. I like, um... Never Let You Go and Never Say Never. All the other ones, like... One Less Lonely Girl, One Time, Baby. All those ones are fucking horrible. His new music's not that bad. Like, uh, Boyfriend, and, uh, Sorry, Love Yourself, What Do You Mean, all those ones are, they're, those ones are good. And another one I really like is one he did with Sean, it's actually one, it's actually a Sean Kingston song about Justin Bieber was in it. Called Any Meeny. And Sean Kingston's birthday was on February 3rd. He was in like a really bad jet skiing accident. In May of 2011, Sean was involved in a near fatal jet skiing accident off Miami, Florida. He was immediately rushed to the hospital and nearly died. But he survived and recovered from his injuries. I'm going to read to you guys how Phil Hartman passed away. Because it's, it's horrible. On the evening of May 27, 1998... Oh, that was almost 20 years ago. Wow. On the evening of May 27, 1998, Brent Hartman visited the Italian restaurant Buca di Beppo in Encino, California with producer and writer Christian Zander, who said she was in a, she was in a good frame of mind. After returning to the couple's nearby home, Bryn started a heated argument with her husband, who threatened to leave her if she started using drugs again, after which he then went to bed. When Harmon slept, Bryn entered his bedroom sometime before 3 a.m. local time on May 28th with a 38 caliber handgun and fatally shot him twice in the head and once in his side. She was intoxicated and had recently taken cocaine. Bryn drove to the home of her friend Ron Douglas and confessed to the killing, but initially he did not believe her. The pair drove back to the house in a separate cars, and Bryn called another friend and confessed a second time. Upon seeing Hartman's body, Douglas called 911 at 6.20 a.m. Police subsequently arrived and escorted Douglas and the Hartman's two children from the premises, by which time Bryn had locked herself in the bedroom and committed suicide by shooting herself in the mouth. Los Angeles police started Hartman's death, stated that Hartman's death was caused by a domestic discord between the couple. A friend stated that Bryn allegedly had trouble controlling her anger. She got attention by losing her temper. A neighbor of the Hartman's told a CNN reporter that the couple had been experiencing marital problems, it's been building, but I don't think it would leave. I didn't think it would lead to this. And actor Steve Guttenberg said they had been a very happy couple, and they always had the appearance of being well balanced. Other causes for the incident were later suggested. Before committing the act, Brenda was taken, taking the antidepressant drug Zoloft. A wrongful death lawsuit was filed in 1999 by Brenda's brother Gregory Omdahl against Pfizer, the drug's manufacturer, and her child psychi psychiatrist Arthur Sorowski, who provided examples of Zoloft to, to Brenda. Hartman's friend and former SNL colleague John Lovitz has accused Hartman's forever, a former news radio co-star Andy Dick of reintroducing Brynn to cocaine, 
causing her to relapse and suffer a nervous breakdown. Dick claims to have known nothing of her condition. In 2006, Lovitz claimed that Dick had approached him at a restaurant and said, I put the film Harmon Hex on you. You're the next one to die. Lovitz was joined by smashing Dick's face into the bar. The following year at the Laugh Factory Comedy Club in Los Angeles, uh, Lovitz and Dick had a further altercation over the issue. Dick asserts that he is not at fault in relation to Hartman's death. Brent's sister, Catherine Almdahl, and brother-in-law, Mike Wright, raised the two Hartman children. Hartman's will stipulated that each children will receive their inheritance over several years after they turned 25. The total value of Hartman's estate was estimated at $1.23 million. That dude was loaded! In accordance to Hartman's will, his body was cremated by Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Mortuary, Glendale, California, and his ashes were scattered over Santa Catalina's Catalina Islands, Emerald Bay. <sighs> Pee wee. Yeah, the guy that played Pee Wee Herman, freaking Paul Rubens, got arrested in 91. In July of 1991, while visiting with relatives, Rubens was arrested in Sarasota, Florida for masturbating during a film at an adult movie theater. During a random police inspection, a detective who had been, uh, who observed Rubens detained him as he was re readying to leave. The sweep also resulted in three other arrests. When detectives examined his driver's license, Rubens told them, I'm Pee Wee Herman, and offered to do a children's benefit for the sheriff's office to take care of this. The next day, after a local reporter recognized Rubens' name, Rubens' attorney made the same offer to the Sarasota Herald Tribune in exchange for the withdrawal for the story. In 1971, Rubens had been arrested in the same country for loitering and prowling near an adult theater. No charges were dropped. His second arrest was in 1983, when Rubens was placed on two years of probation for possession of marijuana, although adjudication was withheld. On the night of the arrest, Rubens went to Nashville, where his sister and lawyer lived, and then to New Jersey, where he would stay for the following months at his friend Doris Duke's estate. So let's do our let's do a channel check. How many subscribers do we have right now? I think we still have the same amount as last time. What? What? This is an error occurred. One thousand nine hundred ninety three. Our subscribers are 1,893, and our channel is 1,876,548. <clears throat>
Hello everyone. Yes, you're getting a sneak peek of me early. The series finale comes in April. It's coming very soon. See you then. Wow. Okay, that was crazy. I just saw the mirror world for about half a second, but here I am. Now you know how to say chocolate in 13 languages. You're welcome. So let me say. Mom! What? 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 No, they're yelling! What are they selling? English. Chocolates! What? Chocolate! Spanish. Chocolate! Portuguese. Chocolate! French. Good man. Italian. Chocolate! Danish. Chocolate! German. Chocolate! Polish. Chocolate! Norwegian. Chocolate! Hungarian. Chocolate! Thai. Mandarin, Korean. Oh, that's it. Chicken nugget yoga. tasted the chicken nuggets. It touched me from inside out. Chicken nuggets is same in every language. It is a language. Move the nugget around you. Love is strong, but chicken nuggets is stronger. I had no idea what yoga was. I just saw chicken nuggets and I turned up. I used to be a vegan for nine years and then I found chicken nugget yoga and it changed my whole perspective on everything. It's just the same as normal yoga but just with the added element of chicken nuggets. It's quite spiritual. Chicken nuggets is life. Life is chicken nuggets. Okay, that has, that has to be fake. I mean, come on. So my friend's doing his little Trevor series right now, and I messaged him, I said, where's the Trevor series? And he said he just got done editing the new episode, so I'm going to ask him how long it is. He's done two so far. He was going to, it, it skipped around a lot. I forgot exactly what he said. It skipped around a lot to how it was going to be. I think it started off, it was going to be like one every other day, then it was going to be like one every three days, and then that didn't really work out so well. And so he was going to do one every Thursday, and that didn't work out well. So, he, he actually, and it actually is going to start working out well. I, I messed that part up. But he's going back to it today, uh, starting the 1st. I'm starting today. Thursday, March 1st, and every, I guess every Thursday until then. And we had a little bit of a Damien return in this one. I'm so glad I snapped that other dick wad. 
mind into it in that universe. He deserves, he deserves to suffer through it, not me. What do they tell you to deserve to suffer for? Fucking snapping me back into that universe. That universe is terrible. You made him snap. Yeah, because I don't want to be in that universe anymore. And then he showed these two, like, unreleased videos in one of his most recent videos. Hey guys, it's been a little while. It's been like 11 days since my last upload on here. Uh, Tony here. Um, it is really warm outside today on uh, February 21st. <laughs> a very rainy ass day. So uh, here's a piece of that. Woo wee guys. What's going on guys? It's Tony here. If you can tell, it's freaking rainy out. This is the next day. And look at this shit. Good God, man. I got out of Dom's apartment moments ago. And oh, I gotta put the camera down. Yeah, that day was crazy. <laughs> I didn't get to film all the, uh, I didn't get to put all the pieces together of the vlog until the next day on the 12th, because it was so much to do, there was so much to edit there, so it took me a while to uh, complete the file and then upload it. Uh, so um, yeah, that that happened. It was really soaking rain that day. Here's something that I filmed a while back which was filmed on October 8th of 2017. This is when I was at Louie's house with Adam and Michael. And it was later in the night before we all had to go home early because, uh, you know, work and school and stuff like that for the others. Um, here's what happened to my camera. Okay, let me explain this. So it was October 8th, 2017. I was at my friend Louis's house. It was me, Louis. Antonio and Michael, and, um, we were sitting in the living room, was, I, I got there first, and Louis was there by himself, his parents weren't there, his sister wasn't there, they were all gone, so at first it was just me and Louis, then Antonio showed up a few minutes later, we started playing GTA on Louis's dad's Xbox downstairs in the living room, and then a few minutes later, Michael showed up, so we're all sitting there playing together, and this was right before Louis's sister, mom, and dad came home. And me and Antonio started, no, me and Michael were sitting there fucking around with each other, and we started messing around with Antonio because he started recording us. And there's one point he, he like, lifts the camera up over the ceiling fan, and uh, this clip is going to show what happens. Yeah, he lifted the camera up like this, and the ceiling fan was on, and the fan went boom and hit the freaking camera. Now listen to my reaction. Oh, oh, yeah, I actually meant that because I was like, oh fuck, is this camera broken? And surprisingly, his camera was fine. It's it, he still has it to this day. He still has it. It it, it works perfectly still. And it actually stayed recording, you know, t t mm, my god, typically, like, or technically, any hit to a camera like that will probably cause it to turn off except mine, because, you know, I can hit my camera like this and, see, it's fine, like, I can just go, do a nice swipe and it, it stays on, you know? I've been having problems with this. Where sometimes if I set it down, like I, I can set it down pretty hardly. If I do it like that, 
um, the camera will shut off and then it'll shut back on and I'll lose all my progress and stuff. Which I actually, an example of that was when I did the updated house tour vlog. I had to do that, I had to record it twice. I started recording it and then I went to go show you guys the bathroom and then I went to go put the camera down on the sink and it shut off. So I had to start all over again. That yeah, my TV's on, but it's on Disney Channel, so I have it on mute because I've had my fair share of problems with that shit. Yeah, I like how you have to feel, feel the need to point that out, like, hey, it's still on! <laughs> yeah, my camera got hit by Louis fan in his living room. Oh, I want to show you guys something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the vlog here. It's nice and long here, 22 minutes. Now, pretty good. I bought two new shirts. At Walmart yesterday, one for seven fifty and one for four ninety seven. So this is the one that I wore to school today. It says I'm allergic to stupidity. I break out into sarcasm. And then this is one that I bought. This is another one that I bought. I wore this one to sleep. It says good vibes only. And then it has and then it has a picture of Bob Ross. And. Where's our other shirt at? It's probably, oh, it's in the laundry. Hold on, give me a second. Is this it? You guys might have gotten a glimpse of it, but, um, basically, Angry Grandpa, you know, Angry Grandpa's passed on. Love you, Grandpa. You know, he's passed on, unfortunately. But everyone knows there's so many videos that have him in there, and his legacy will live on forever. He'll, his legacy will live on forever. His legacy will never die. And they made a memorial shirt that was available until February 11th. And it was a picture. It was Angry Grandpa's face, like right here at the bottom. At the very bottom, it had the Angry Grandpa logo. And then it said, Gone but not forgotten. And I, and I tried buying it off of the Angry Grandpa store with a gift card that my sister gave me. But for some reason it didn't work. So instead I went to Custom Ink. I used my, I used the gift card for that and it worked. I went to Custom Ink and I made this. So what I did was I, I, print, I had a picture of the Angry Grandpa logo. Of a, a transparent logo. A transparent picture of the Angry Grandpa logo. Where there was no background at all. And I put the logo right here. Up here is the day he was born, October 16th, 1950. And here at the bottom is when he passed away, December 10th, 2017. I'm trying to get my hands on the other memorial shirt they have right now before that one goes out of sale. It just, and it's, it, it's, it doesn't have Grandpa's picture on it or anything, but it it says Angry Never Dies. And something really cool. Michael shared, retweeted this on his Twitter page, and he also showed it in one of his most recent vlogs. A guy got an angry grandpa tattoo. For example, um, the really uh, that that really good picture that Michael took of grandpa in his kitchen, that that guy George Mendez painted. The picture of grandpa, he's like leaning against the the kitchen counter. He's going like this. Oh, coming! Give me a second, guys. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, I forgot to tell my mom I was recording it. Uh, I actually, I try to tell her when I'm recording to basically avoid what just happened. To avoid her calling me while I'm recording. But anyways, um, that really good picture that um, Michael took of Grandpa in Grandpa's kitchen. That that guy George Mendez painted with him leaning against the counter going like this. Like, it was just really like, and yeah. It's like... Well, that, the, the guy that got the tattoo had that picture, had the Angry Grandpa logo, Grandpa's signature, and then it said 1950 to 2017. So it was actually like a really nice memorial tattoo. Speaking of tattoos, I'm going to be getting a tattoo right here, uh, hopefully soon. As a lot of you know, I had some pretty major back surgery, November 9th, 2012. So almost six years ago now. 
And so I'm going to get, it's the word love, but the, the O for the love is the, the green ribbon for scoliosis. So it's going to be the L, and the O is the ribbon, and then VE. So it's going to be love, but the O is the ribbon. And then inside the ribbon, I'm going to put the day that I got the surgery. So it'll be 11 9 12 So at 26 minutes, I can say thank you guys for watching. If you like to subscribe, please do. If you don't watch, of course, you don't have to. I've been pretty down in the dumps lately. Um, I actually am a little happier. I'm starting to feel a lot happier. Um, some of my symptoms are starting to go away, like my chest pains are starting to subside a little. Um, I realize I've been too much of a hypochondriac. Like, I've been hyping things up to the point where I'm actually making myself sick. So I, I came to realize I can't do that anymore, and I've actually been losing weight. I started a diet. Um, when I started, I was at 266, and right now, the last I checked, I'm at 256. So hopefully to get down from there, I hope to be to be out of the 250s very soon. To get down to the 240s, 230s, 220s, 210s, the, then down to about 200. I, I want to at least be out of the 200s by sometime this year. And I actually told my mom yesterday, I want to be able to, f to fit into... I want to be able to lose enough weight to the point where I don't have to wear like 2x, 3x, 4x shirts anymore. I can go down where I can go down to a large, a, la a size L shirt. I want to be that weight to the point where I can actually wear large. So, I love each and every single one of you and I will see you again tomorrow.